I, I just love observing the effect of wood chips. You, if you, those you can, if you can see my neighbor's cherry trees over here, you can, you can, you can see how the foliage looks on the top of the tree. You can see it's definitely going, going dormant. If you look at the branches coming this way, you see how much bigger the leaves are. Are you noticing that? The leaves are quite a bit bigger. You know why? The roots now are getting into my wood chips. The roots are into my wood chips, and they're eating better. And because they're eating better, the trees, the leaves get bigger. It's just, you know, I love paying attention because it's just, all of nature is really speaking loudly, showing you how it all works. Over here I have a hydrangea. You know hydrangea flowers, if you have acid soil, the flowers are blue. If you have alkaline soil, they're pink. My hydrangea has both blue and pink flowers at the same time. I think it's awesome. You know why? Because the pH in wood chips is an amazing 7.0. I love the number seven, that's the number of the creator, and it's perfect balance. At center, everything thrives. I'm going to show you over here that where I have lavender, which is alkaline loving plant, growing right next to blueberries. They're touching, and they're both thriving because it's 7.0, it's center, and everything, everything's happy. Where if you get a natural environment, 7.0, you can grow everything there because it's center. And at center, everybody's happy. Once you have a plant, you will have free food for the rest of your life because it will always keep creating seed after its own kind. I'm telling you, all of nature is revealing the goodness of the Father. He is really good, very generous and kind. And you can see the whole concept of the genetically modified and hybridized stuff. That makes you a slave. You have to buy from them. They control who has food. What's your annual rainfall? It varies from 14 to 18 inches. If you didn't hear before of this orchard, has not been watered or fertilized for, 18, for, for 38 years, ever. No water. And we've had major droughts here, and it's not affected. You know, it's interesting, you, you see my sequoia trees, you see the interior needles are turning brown. You know, I think it's so amazing, again, if you observe nature, just the genius of the Creator. You see, every fall, the Creator puts a covering of needles and leaves over the whole planet to return what the plants took out. You follow me? As the plants took out of the ground minerals to create these leaves, every year he returns it. But you see these, these conifers, they're evergreen. They don't naturally drop their needles. So you know how he gets them to do it? He creates a drought. And it's so interesting how they do it. You look at the tips of those, of those they're bright green. In the interior, they're turning brown. What they're doing is they're, they're getting rid, reducing what they have to hydrate. And they're doing it in a place where it's not visible. And what's amazing to me, after the wind blows, I got like four inches on the ground. You look at the trees, they look totally full. They're not lacking anything, but they put back a covering to feed themselves and hold moisture. You know, again, if you observe nature, it's so perfect. I had the most amazing experience when I, when I was first, so I planted those trees 19 years ago, six to eight, six inch starts, like little whips. So they're about this tall, and we had this amazing drought here. We're talking like really dry. And the whole interior is turning totally brown. And so I'm talking to the creator, he says, I gotta water him. He says, no, don't you dare water him. Don't you ever water him. And he says, look at the tips. You see, the tips of the tree is indicating its state. That's where the new growth is. You look at the tips, they're all bright green. He says, that's the new growth. If the tips are brown, it's over. Your tree's dying. But if the tips are good, it's saying we're getting plenty of nutrition to put on new growth. So just leave it alone, don't do it. So it's getting worse and worse. We're talking like getting really brown. He says, you sure? I better watch this. Don't water. Just listen to me. So I'm watching this and I said, okay, tips are good. It's, it's all right. So we get this really heavy fall wind and I go out there, look at my trees and they're totally lush green. And it looked like nothing came out, but I look at the ground. There's like six inch cover of needles. And what I heard was, is your trees are realizing that this is all the water they're going to get. They need to put down a, more, a greater cover to hold moisture. Had you watered them and stopped that whole process, they would have been weakened and not prepared for upcoming droughts. And I got that day a revelation that nature needs no help, and if I try to help it, I really hurt it yeah, big time. Nature needs no help. And when I'm out there trying to water and do all this stuff to help it, I'm making it weak. Because you see, it's in, in, in becoming, you overcome by, you know, resistance makes you strong. And as a tree had to overcome this, this, this drought issue, it's empowered. And if I stopped that by artificially watering, it would have never put that cover down. 
in the upcoming years it wouldn't have had that to support support itself. So I so get that nature is so right, you know, and it doesn't need me and if I get in there and mess with it, I mess it up. <laughs> so anyway, I live in a place where you can't grow figs and you can't grow, grow grapes. I want you to notice that really nice fig tree out there at the end of my property, bright green, and I got the most awesome fig, cro fig crop this year. And as, you, and as you approach over here, you'll see this mass of, of green on, on my fence. Those are grapes. They're not quite ripe yet. If they were, I'd love to have them because they're just so delicious. But if you, if you walk over there and you can find some that are just starting to turn yellow, pick one, because I want you to see the huge water content. Here's something I'm really, really picking up on, is that the Creator is very orderly. You understand orderly? There's order in nature. You know what the Earth is 75% of? You know what your body is 75% of? Water. You know what all my produce is 75% of? Water. And I'm getting it. I'm really seeing it. And you know what's really amaz amazing me is how things have changed in such a short time. When I grew up in Los Angeles, that's where I grew up, Los Angeles is a desert. It's a desert there. And it's 100 degrees a lot all summer long or more. Back in the 50s when I grew up, there was no such thing as a water bottle. Water bottles did not exist. Some of you older people my age, are you hearing me? You get it? They didn't exist. There was no such thing. And we're out working hard all summer long, 100 degree temperature. We're sweating like crazy. And we had no water bottles. You know why? Back then, plants had roots. They took up water from the ground and were hydrated with our food. The food we ate hydrated us. Today, farmers are watering just as much as they did in the 50s because the ground's compacted, depleted, roots can't spread, the water's not going in the plant. And all your produce is totally dehydrated today because there's no water in it. So this is why I want you as much as possible to sample some and just observe how much water content. And this is September after we've come to the end of summer. Now this has not been irrigated, so I just want you to get how powerful a root system is. So as we come up here, you, there's, there's a green right on the edge. It's called Holland Greens. Snap off at the base because I want you to get the stem because the stem is going to blow your mind how sweet it is. And just check out the water content. All this is, stuff is good food, so you're welcome to it. Sweet. You know, not bitter at all. Delicious. How is it, ladies? Very tasty. <laughs> nice. Actually, it's almost um, sweet. Yeah, but it definitely has a, the flavor of the green. Mm -hmm. Delicious, yeah. yeah we're sort of celery like. Let me tell you about starts. Those of you who have gone to the store and bought these beautiful, gorgeous starts, bring them home, put them to your ground, and they set back, they sit still and go backwards. You know why? There's a reason. They were grown in an unnatural environment, warm and protected. They were grown in a sterile medium. Peat moss and verbiculite are sterile, and they're fed an IV of, <laughs> basically an IV of um, miracle Grow. and when they come to the real world, they totally are weak and they just set back. I've told people, buy a start, plant a seed next to them, watch the seedling pass it up. Wow. I'm being real. Man, this, this, I have watermelon out here. Watermelon doesn't grow here. I planted these in July because it was such a cold, wet spring, nothing grew. And I got watermelon, I'm ready to eat. Wow. I'm flipping out like, you gotta be kidding. But it's saying, yeah, I can do it. This is nutrient dense, I can grow here. I'm good. So Paul, yes. the thing with um, crop rotation is really- Oh, this is awesome, crop rotation. <laughs> this is so awesome. Thank you so much. Bless you for that question. See, we're told to rotate crops, which is a lot of hard work. What do you think about it? If you look in nature, there's never, ever been any crop rotation. Plants go to seed in the same place every year, decade after decade, century after century, and everything's growing well. And we're going to the effort of moving them? I'm just telling you. If you think about what we do, it's really stupid. Stupid. And we keep doing it. I just, I intentionally, I was, I was raised in a Swiss German culture. I think that German part of me loves to do things they say you can't. It just, and so now I'm making an effort to do all the stuff they say you can't. I'm looking for places. It's, I'm, I'm realizing that every square inch I have, I can grow food. And so let me just tell you something powerful. 
You know why we have large farms in the United States? You know why we have large farms? Large corporations? No. <laughs> There's a reason why they're large. And it's a very sad reason. It's because they're producing so little. They're producing so little they have to be huge. As we walk through my place today, you're going to traverse over less than half an acre. And you're going to see abundance that's going to blow you away. And what I want you to get is when you have nutrient-dense soil, you don't need a lot of space. And you're going to find I'm growing stuff under my trees. And they're actually growing far better under my trees than out in full sun. Thick, heavy duty. I'm so frustrated. I got these potatoes in amongst my orchard and I want to harvest. I always harvest in September. They're still blooming. I says, would you please back off and shut down? I want to harvest. They don't know how to stop. It's like, give me a break. I want to harvest. And they're blooming. <sighs> It's just, this, this abundance, man, can be a challenge. <laughs> you always plant, if you're bringing a tree or a spring, you plant at the same level it came out of the ground. The same level. Just repeat what it lived in. Don't change it. So I plant at the same level, I bury the wood chips, and I take off. I've had asparagus here for 23 years, and it's thriving. Let me tell you something about asparagus. This is, this is something that I want you to really hear me, and you're going to see this about everything. And this is why everything in nature... This is just a, a, something as a foundation. If you look at nature, mammals, that's the category we're in, mammals. Mammals in nature are not immunized or vaccinated. They carry no health insurance. They go to no doctors. They have no refrigerator, no stove. Are you hearing me? Yes. And they live long, healthy, disease-free lives. They're not sick. They don't get sick. And the answer is very simple. They're eating food fresh in season locally they don't import anything they don't go to i'm just i'm being i'm being very real but i'm just telling you look at the evidence and if you simply do the math you can't eat dead food and expect life i'm just being very real dead food will only produce death if you, if you look at human history for six thousand years the disease that's happening on the planet today worldwide has never happened in human history ever ever ever. If you're, not, if you're properly nourished, you can't get sick. It's impossible. This is so cool. The, the whole system in the world could shut down. All the power, all the stores, no gas, and I'm good for life. Because I get sun and rain, my plants produce seed, and I have far more I could ever eat. I mean, my chickens eat better than most people because I, I have to give them all my food because I can't eat it all, you know? And, and what I'm getting, if you, look at, if you look at Canada, 40 below zero, you hear me? 40 below zero. In the forest, nothing dies. Are you hearing me? Nothing dies. You know why? Because this material is an insulator. It holds heat in the ground. It's, it, and everybody's farm up in Canada, next to nature, with all the cover taken off, everything freezes and dies. And if we're paying attention, it's so obvious. It's so like, duh, wake up. You know what I learned about this stuff? I didn't realize how significant this cover was. It's not only insulated, but it's also a filter. I learned this accidentally. When the film came out, I made a statement. I said, food grown in a nutrient-dense you know, soil like this will have more mineral content than those with chemical fertilizers. So some chemical fertilizer got a hold of the girls really angry and says, that's not true. Chemical fertilizers has the same nutrient value as anything grown anywhere else. It's really good. This is, well, we don't know that. Do the test and we'll, we'll publish it. So they went and got some really nice sandy loam soil, the best. And they tilled it, did all the right stuff. And they put, planted the stuff and put chemical fertilizers to the max. Now see, chemical fertilizers, if you go over the edge, you'll burn all the plants. There's a fine line. You can only use so much. With organic, no limit. Anyway, so right next to that stuff, they planted the same plants in wood chips. And to their amazement, when they tested them, the stuff in the wood chips did have higher mineral content. And so, and so in the natural mind, I love what they did. They thought, let's put the chemical fertilizers over the wood chips and upgrade those plants. And they did. What they found when they tested them? No change. Absolutely no change. They've got this chemical fertilizer all on their water like crazy. It's all being dissolved, but the plant's not changing. And so these chemtrails go across my property over here. I just, I just, I just smile. I says, that trash, that aluminum barium will never access my roots because this is a filter. Yay, God. I'm just telling you, man, I love it. He's, he's just awesome. It's just awesome. I mean, these things are under chemtrails all the time. 
and they're awesome. They're not affected by it because this is a filter. It's ah, the best. <laughs> I want you to go over there in the center where people are walking and with your feet, pound down as hard as you can. Really try to compact this. You see what the ground's doing under his feet? It's bouncing back. Now bend over with your hand and move it. Go deep. <laughs> you see how impactful your pounding was? And I want you to see that. Living soil cannot be compacted. And so this is, for those of you who are gardeners, you know how you approach your garden in the spring? You prepare soil, because it's hard. This never needs preparation. All I do is a little rake, come and grate it up, plant my seeds, and I'm done. The only tool in my garden is a rake. I have no use for a shovel or a hoe because there's nothing I need to move. It can't compact. And so you so get that all this stuff we've been doing for thousands of years is insanity because it's unnatural. And we work so hard to fail as pathetic. Really, we work hard to fail. It's just a bummer. You know, again, it's, what I'm loving this is so simple. Are you getting it? Everything I'm telling you is simple. It's really simple. Because that's how everything in nature is. It's simple, not hard. <laughs> and, and, and all the stuff we do is difficult, really hard and complicated. Most people think that what is hard to understand is profound. This is incorrect. What is hard to understand is what is immature, unclear, and mostly false. I love that. True wisdom is simple and moves from the mind directly to the heart. I love that. True wisdom is simple and moves from the mind into the heart.